send you the location. I'll be there soon. Looks like our serial killer M is at it again. Find a business card in this guy's pocket. It says Interspecies Breeding Specialist, IBS. Kate's Feline Couples, KFC. And an address. Yeah, Kate's Feline Couples is a dating service for cats. Looks like our boy here worked for them. We believe this waiter gave it to be a part time thing. Baron, you and Emma will have your hands full trying to figure this one out. I have all the information I need. You don't want to know the victim's name? Nope. You know we don't have that technology yet. Maybe I'll just oil her. I have a special method. How have you been, James? Can't complain. Listen, I've been working on this assignment for a while and my equipment's just not making a cut. Oh yeah. Come on down, I'll show you our inventory.
as you can see, we've got a selection of phones here for you to upgrade to, James. Each one has a special different function. I like this one. Why? It's got red on it. Okay. Emma, do you need anything? How do you know my name? It's my job to know everyone's name. I think this is, is exactly what I was looking for. Thanks for the help, Q. Anytime. Just let me know if you need anything. Will do. See you around. Hey, James. Emma. I heard you have some leads on the string of murders in the area. Sorta. We picked up a few of the murder weapons used to the past three crime scenes. The only other evidence we found was the note in the victim's shoe. Yeah, I've been thinking about the note you gave me. I still don't know what it means. I think I might know what it means. When I went to college for criminology, I minored in applied math, and this note's a math problem. It says, You must solve for the local maximum and local minimum on the interval from 0 to 80 of the function f of x equals x cubed over 3, Minus 41x squared plus 1105x plus 63. Great. But how does that relate to the murder? I don't know, but that's how you find the answer to the problem on the note. Maybe it'll become relevant later in the search. In the meantime, I need you to go to a place called Kate's Feline Couples. All the victims work there. The owner's name is Kate. Here's her contact info. Thanks. I'll get the information to you as soon as I get it. Good luck. Hi, welcome to Kate's Feeling Couples. Can I help you? Yes, we're looking for Miss McKenna. Do you have an appointment? No, we're detectives from the BCPD. We have a few questions to ask her. I see she's available. It's Kate! I'm stuck in board meetings. I would ask them, but I don't trust most of them. We'll look into that. In the meantime, what were you doing last night? Oh, I was at a fancy restaurant. Je ne sais quoi? You can check my reservation. We'll make sure we do that. Baron, what on earth are you doing? Just trying to crack this case. Thanks for the help, Caitlin. Don't call me that. There is a reduced fat peanut butter in the cat. Thanks, Taco. Eats. Eat Paco. Whatever. Also, a cat or eel. Uh, we take to La Hospital. I think it's pronounced L Hospital. And if you're going to say it that way, it's La Hospital. We appreciate the help. Uh, we'll contact you later. Let's go on. Baron! Hunter! Just so I wanted to see. What's up? We picked up Mr. Jacob Grimm after he broke into evidence. He was trying to steal the note located in the third victim's shoe. What could he want with that note? Nothing. Unless he was trying to get rid of evidence that would incriminate himself. Seems like he accomplished the opposite. Get into that interrogation room and get a conviction. You don't need to tell me twice. Mr. Grimm, is it? I heard you were sneaking around the evidence facility. I was never in any evidence facility. Nice try, but we've got you on surveillance. So let's try this again. What were you doing in the evidence facility? I wasn't doing any. You were trying to steal the note that we found in the Vic's shoe so that we wouldn't figure out what the answers were, right? What the? I guess you didn't realize that my partner here is a certified math whiz. She cracked your little code, Grimm. The answers are 17 and 65. Here, allow me to explain. We have the function, so to find the minimum and maximum, we need to take the first derivative of the function. Set this derivative equal to zero after factoring it. The two solutions are 17 and 65. And plug them into the second derivative of the function to check if they are a max or a min. 
17 is the max, and 65 is the minimum. The only thing we don't know is what the answers represent. That's where you come in. You gonna tell us? Okay, look, I didn't kill anybody. I got an anonymous message telling me that if I stole that note, I'd get a ton of cash. Who was the message from? I just said it was anonymous. Continue. I think I can help you understand it. You said the answers are 17 and 65, right? Yeah. It's a year, 1765. Continue. Have you ever heard of the nursery rhyme, Hey Diddle Diddle? Absolutely. The first recorded version of it was in the Mother Goose medley around that time period. Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Kate's feeling couples. Right. The cow jumped over the moon. The killer struck a knight. Uh, the little dog left to see such a sport. Sport, sport. Keep going. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Referring to the waiter. Right. But what do sports have to do with anything? Maybe it means like a sports team that are called the dogs? Or maybe it's referring to small dogs like... Poodles! We've got another one. So what's the scoop on the new guy? Surprise, surprise. He worked for Kate at KFC. Who's a personal assistant? You basically just got a coffee. Didn't you just get here? I can see the notes on your tablet. Oh, okay. Anyway, the killer left another note. It says, You must find the area between the two curves of R equals cosine beta plus 2 and R equals 1.725 M. Looks like he ate quite a night last night. Emma? Work your magic. I need some time. Whatever you need, baby. Look at Doggy! Hey, Doggy, come here. Hey, Doggy, Doggy. You're so little. The clue from the last crime. It was supposed to lead us here. We need to work faster. Right. Get on that clue you've got. And let me know what you guys find. Whatever you say, James. Don't call me that. <laughs> it's funny. We have the same name. I feel like these clues are leading us farther and farther from the answers we're looking for. Have you gotten any further with that note? Shush, I think I've almost got it. Done. Yay! Tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, okay. Look at the graphs of the second equation first. See how the first graph encompasses the second graph? And they intersect here. So just take double the integral from 0 to 3 pi over 4 of 1 half times the quantity of the first equation squared minus the quantity of the second equation squared, all with respect to theta. The answer comes out to approximately 3.75 pi. Mmm, pi. Wait a minute. There's a pie shop. Ches Pie. Down by the sea. Oh my god. First off, it's pronounced she. Second, stick to solving mysteries. Anyway, if my memory is correct, the address to the pie shop is 375. And the Great Baron solves the clue again. Don't sass me. Yes, uh, Lucas. Lucas Eaglin is the name. Can I help you? We're from the BCPD. We have a few questions to ask you about uh, one of your customers. His name is Michael. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Uh, he usually comes in here about once a week. I haven't seen him in a while, though. Is he okay? Let's just say he's moved on. He was found murdered in his home last night. We found this note that led to your uh, fine establishment. 
you people can understand what this says? Well, if you can. Do you recognize the handwriting? Why would I recognize the handwriting? I work at a pie shop. You can just take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. You know, we, we try to change up our menu here, always driving a new product, using the same ingredients to save money, you know. But we normally add in the first ingredient, and then change up the second, and then we'll add in the second again, but change up the first. You okay? Sorry, I start to babble when I get nervous. Why are you so nervous? I really have to pee. Fine, go pee. Ah! Oh my gosh, what's the problem? Look! Looks like a dead body. Are you two actually detectives? You're looking pretty suspicious now, Mr. Eagland. You're coming with us. What the heck is going on? I didn't even get to pee yet. All right, Mac, why'd you do it? Mac? Sounds like I'm in a detective movie. We saw you walk away to the bathroom. The next thing we know, there's a dead body in the bathroom. Are we supposed to assume that's a coincidence? Yes. Well, it's not. I think you killed him, you hit him in the bathroom, and- Baron, Hunter, I think you two need to hear this. The results from the lab just came in. And? We found cat hair on the body. And another note. Huh. Kate? Well, maybe. But the note is what I'm interested in. It says, Detectives. Getting closer, I see. You've done well with these past problems. The next one will be much more challenging. I have a vase that I trace the outline of. I want to find its total surface area, but I think you should do it for me. The length of the vase from the base to the brim is blank centimeters. The function of the vase outline follows a pattern of the square root of the quantity x plus 1 over the quantity of blank minus 5 divided by 10. You have exactly blank hours until I disappear forever. Good luck. M. Are all of those numbers missing? I can't solve it without those numbers. Were they given to you earlier? I don't think so, unless... The missing numbers are the answers from the previous clues. We can try it. It's all we've got. Good job. Okay, let's see here. I figured out most of it. The problem starts out with setting up an integral for surface area. We need to have the derivative of the function as well. The integral is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 17 of the original function times the square root of the quantity of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared all with respect to x. That should give us the answer for the surface area of 129.2292. I don't understand the last part though. If I plug in the last answer, 3.75, that doesn't make any sense and I don't know how the surface area helps us. Why not? Well, it's been more than 3.75 hours since we got the note. Do you really think she'd only give us less than 4 hours to figure out the clue? She's led us this far, why would she make the last clue unattainable? You think the murderer is a female? Yeah, I mean, if it's Kate. Hmm. Okay. Well, you sure you used all the numbers we already have? Yeah, that's all we have. Hmm. Um, did you multiply 3.75 and 3.14? Why? Well, because the answer to the last problem was 3.75 pi, not just 3.75. Nice going, Baron. Thanks. So you think we have, like, two more hours? I guess so. Two more hours to figure out what the surface area of a vase has to do with anything. Didn't you break a vase in Kate's office? Yeah. There was a bloody fingerprint on it. I broke it so I could get that piece. That's illegally obtained evidence. You can't do that. Do you want this case solved, or do you want more bodies? How many people have to die before we catch this killer, huh? Four? Five? Look, I would do anything to get this guy too, but we need to do this by the book. It's the only way we're gonna catch him. You're the best detective we've got, James. I'm the only detective you've got, James. Sorry to interrupt, but the results of the blood from the vase came back. And? We couldn't get a match on the fingerprint. Dang it! This is ridiculous. Thanks for the info, Sarah. Baron, go get Kate and bring her for questioning. Right away. I demand to know the meaning of this! Don't play coy with me. You know why you're here. I don't. I literally, I literally can't. What? I can't even. I literally can't. Alright, anyway, there was a bloody fingerprint found on the vase that fell in your office. 
Why was there blood on your face, Kate? I don't know, but all I know is that the person who's responsible for cleaning my office is gonna get what's seriously coming to them. You trying to hide something? No! Uh, pa Paco can explain. Why is he here? He follows me everywhere. Isn't that right, my little Choco Taco Paco? See? See? One, one of Miss Miss McKenna's uh, cats got got boo boo. I I was trying to mend it, but it ran ran away. Uh, I was chasing it through through her uh, through op office, and it, it knocked over the base over. Uh, luckily, I dared to I was there to catch it. Paco, do you have a green card? Well, I'm I'm he's, not. He's working on a citizenship right now. Isn't that right, Paco? Let's see. That's why his fingerprints didn't register. It also explains why the blood wasn't even human. Yeah. So what do we do now that the bloody fingerprint isn't important? I don't know, but I'm about to freak out. These clues just keep leading us in circles. Alright, I want every suspect in this case right here, right now. Okay, I know this is a little unorthodox, but it's the only way I could get all of you together and put together the missing pieces. We have three suspects. Kate, the crazy billionaire who has quite a bit of cats. Her cat's hair was found on one of the victims, not to mention she's the employer of all the victims. Next we have Jacob Grimm, who was found trying to eliminate evidence, and he claims that he was hired to do so. But there's no evidence to support his claim. Mm -hmm. I know. Finally we have Lucas. The math pointed directly to him, and a victim was found in his shop. Perhaps he didn't get, have time to get rid of the body? I don't know. The killer could have been any one of them. Can I just say something? No! no. Oh boy. Uh, can I have a script, please? Paco! Oh, Thank you. Where's the list of... Ah, here we go. Okay. Well, it wasn't these three because they're dead. Obviously. obviously. Caitlin seems to be innocent. We checked her alibi was legitimate. Kate's receptionist is too stupid to kill anyone, not to mention leaving all those notes with the math problems. Of course, of course. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's no way that Lucas had enough time to kill the guy in the bathroom, but that doesn't mean he didn't kill the others. Grim wouldn't have left a note and then tried to steal it, or would he? Um, Baron. What? His fingerprints would have come up in the database. Uh, okay, all these people are ruled out. It wasn't Q because <laughs> Q's just awesome. I love Q. I'm going to say that it was the commissioner! James, you're fired. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know it wasn't you. Uh, that leaves two suspects. Paco and... Where's Emma?
Hello, Mr. Baron. Who are you? My name is Smith. I know all about the history of calculus. You got a question, I've got an answer. Okay. I'm here to talk to you about assembling a group of highly skilled individuals. I saw you work on the MTs. I think you got what it takes. I just let a serial killer get away with several murders, and you think I have what it takes to be in a group of highly skilled individuals? Trust me, I know skill when I see it. Are you in? I'm in. Excellent. Welcome to the Derivative Initiative.